What is up guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your 16th Objective C tutorial and if you're watching for it, I did get my hanky this time and also it is 94 degrees right now in my apartment and my air conditioner broke so I got a fan over there and it's blowing on my face but I'm still as hot as crap right now but anyways in this tutorial I'm going to be going over something called the do while loop or some people call it the do loop um what it is is pretty much the same thing as the while loop except reversed it does the statement first and then it tests if the condition or test is true so in essence since you do your statements first and then your test even if your variable in your statement is false it runs it at least one time and before it tests it so you'll see in a second so let's go ahead and make a variable called n and we'll set it equal to 1. And now let's go ahead and make our do loop. And since x for a do loop or a do while loop is do, and then you go ahead and you write your statements right here. So I'm going to make the same loop as the last time just to show you guys the differences. Let's go ahead and ns log this stuff. At, and what we want to do is just print out this variable i and n. And now what we want to do is add one to n each time and I probably need my semicolons that'd be a good idea and now after you do your bit of code you give it a test and you give it a test using while and don't forget to add a semicolon after while unlike last time so n is less than or equal to 5 so now what exactly is this doing we have a variable here called n and we set it equal to 1 now the first thing that it's going to do is print out n and add 1 to it so it's now equal to 2 but it only printed out 1 and now it's going to test alright is n less than or equal to 5 yes so I'm going to do this code again so unlike before where it was the test first and then the code in this do while loop it does it and then it tests if the condition is true so let me go ahead and run this and I want to demonstrate one point one two three four five exact same as before so how is this different and when would you use this there are going to come instances when you want to run code at least one time so for example if this n was equal to nine what this would happen is if you had a basic while loop then the test would never run but if you wanted to do the code first it would run it once and then when it tested it it would see that it was greater than five so it wouldn't run again so let me build this and show you guys what happens all the output was nine nothing else and why did it do this did you guys even see that or was that way too quick nine nine there we go take some time so what it does is it prints out nine adds one to it so it becomes ten and now it says alright while n is less than or equal to five which was ten is like whoa 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 I am done with this. I already did it once. That's enough. So that's the basics of do while loop. Um, it pretty much ensures that you're going to run your code at least once. And um, you know what? Let's just go ahead and build a program demonstrating um, a useful bit. So let's go ahead and set that equal to 1, of course, and delete everything else. And now let's go ahead and build. What I like to do actually is build the shell for the do while loop. I actually put two in there and I put while just like that and now all I have to fill in is the stuff I really care about so let's go ahead and print out let's go ahead and make like a table of the number squared and see I need this again and by the way if you guys are like oh, why do you use a hanky so much it's actually pollen season down in North Carolina and there is pollen all over the place and it's really annoying so that's why I have really bad allergies pretty gross I know but anyways ns log nice transition into that ns log at posture posture let's go ahead and write the number squared is another number so now what we're going to do is take that number n and for squared we write n times n so ns log and then after we're done with this we just go to the next number using n plus plus and how long do we want to do this how long do we want this table to run Let's put while n is less than or equal to 10. That's a nice even number. Actually, let's go to 12 because most multiplication tables are 12, even though this is like a square table. But anyways, let me build and run this, save it, 
and I forgot a comma or something. Implicit. Oh, gotta capitalize that. That's embarrassing. Save that, and now check this out. One squared is one. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144, and go on and go on. And you can do this all day. So that's a lot easier than typing in, you know, doing all this with a calculator. That's uh, that's why computer programming is awesome. So I'm going to explain to you guys one last time what happened in this program. See, that's a really effective program. This might be the first effective program. Yeah, that's nice. I'm going to send that in to Microsoft, see if I can make some money off of that, baby. I'm just kidding, Microsoft doesn't even use Objective C. Anyways, listen to me ramble. Oh, what a little never mind. And anyways, int n one. So we took a variable n and set it equal to one. And said, no matter what the test is, we're gonna run this bit of code once. So we printed it out, we printed out the number, and then we times it by one and printed out them both in a nice little sentence here. And next we added one to our variable, which then made it two and then it finally tested it is your number less than or equal to 12 yes it's 2 so I'm gonna run this again 2 squared is 4 add 1 to it it's 3 now test it again is 3 less than or equal to 12 yes it is so let's do this again and I'm gonna do it again and again and again and eventually when it got to 13 it said alright is 13 less than or equal to 12 heck no it's not so I'm done with this program finally I'll see you later and then that's all it did basically I mean it didn't talk like I'll get it like that but I mean essentially it's what it really was thinking so anyways that's the basics of a do while loop I hope you understand now and this is a program to demonstrate the usefulness of it even though you could have done this easily in a for or a while loop so uh, that's that so thank you guys for watching don't forget to check out my blog and please subscribe because these videos are awesome and they're free so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later